Hey there, Phil Ebener here from videoschoolonline.com. Today I wanted to bring you a free preview lecture from a brand new Affinity Photo editing course. Affinity Photo is a great alternative to Photoshop. It's much, much cheaper and almost just as powerful. In this course, I've partnered with a professional artist and designer, Jeremy Hazel, and in this lecture, he's going to walk through the basic editing process to get you started. If you're interested in the complete course, I'll include discounted links down below in the description. Here's Jeremy. All right, folks, welcome to the Affinity Photo course. What I wanted to do here is I just want to take a couple minutes to kind of walk you through my six step workflow and the reason that I do what I do, because this is how we're going to be taking you through the course. In the course of the next however many hours that we're together, we're going to walk you through the six steps that I use in order to turn an average photo into something extraordinary. So let's take an average photo like this, right? This is shot, it's pretty blue, it's pretty garbagey. So the very first thing we're going to do, we're going to teach you about composition. So we're going to take you through the composition, we're going to show you the rule of thirds, we're going to take that barrier out of there, and we're going to show you how to straighten, crop, rotate, all of that. So once you've got your composition right, the very next thing is to change up some of the distortion. There are some live layers that we can put on here, right? We can use all sorts of different tools, right? Let's say you've got distortion. We can actually use these types of tools in order to fix some of the distortion. Now. If you don't have any distortion, awesome. You get to move right past this step, all right? But if you do, there are tools that we're gonna teach you for that. So when we go through here, after you fix your distortion, after you work in the develop persona, if you've got a raw image, then we're gonna take you through and we're actually gonna walk you through contrast. So let's make an adjustment to contrast on this. We're gonna walk you through a levels adjustment. The levels adjustment is gonna take your picture. We're gonna kick up the blacks a little bit. We're going to kick up the whites a little bit to add a little bit more contrast. And automatically that picture is looking better right off the bat. So from there, what we're going to do is then we're going to go ahead and we're going to adjust the color. So when you go ahead and you adjust the color, we're going to go over to the layers. We're going to go over and make an adjustment. So let's go ahead and make an adjustment to the background. We're going to show you something called white balance. So we're gonna go over to white balance. We're gonna make a subtle adjustment to the white balance and automatically this thing changes substantially. Okay, there we go. With just a subtle change in white balance, we're able to take you through and we're changing the universal nature of this picture. So going back into our six stage process, right now we're adjusting the color to get it closer to correct. Now, with the Layers tab, we're going back into the Layers tab, folks. We're gonna go back into here, and now we're gonna sharpen this image. We're gonna go up to Layer, and then we're gonna put another filter on, and I'm just gonna show you how a simple clarity filter can change your game. With the addition of a simple clarity filter, we're able to take a picture that could use a little bit of sharpening, add a little bit of clarity to this gate, in conjunction with that whole color adjustment, complete pop, all right? So from there, we can move through then and denoise it if we had to. There's no noise on here. And now we're ready for the local adjustment, right? We've got a whole host of tools over here, including quick masks that we can apply so that we can do a whole host of adjustment to this picture without changing the universal. So we're gonna show you in this way how you can actually change these flowers from red to blue. We're gonna show you how you can change up the color of the sky. We're going to show you how you can do a lot of really cool things in the local preset. So when we go through there, the last thing we're going to do then is we're going to show you how to add the artistic portion. We've got brushes over here we can use. Let's go and hit a little vignette right off the bat with this thing, right? So we're going to go over here. We're going to go to layer. We're going to add a new layer and we're going to add a vignette filter. Now I'm going to move that up to the top of the stack. And then what we're going to do, we're going to go ahead and adjust the exposure down. We're going to reduce the hardness. We're going to reduce the scale. And then we're going to 
tweak on the shape just a little bit. All right, good deal. So you remember what the photo looked like before? Here's what it looks like after. This again is the six step process. Now what you see in front of you is we have all of the different steps and we have every single tool that we're gonna go through in addition to many others in this course. So you see that there is no tool that we're gonna cover that doesn't have an application. Now, what kind of stuff are we gonna end up making? We're gonna go ahead and we're gonna make some stuff that goes up on your wall. I'm gonna show you how to make this out of a photo of an orchid that you've got. We're gonna take some stuff and some of it's gonna be whimsical and weird and then we're gonna make some stuff. We're gonna combine a couple photos to do some plays on light. We're also gonna take some very majestic type of shots and I'm gonna show you how to increase the contrast on your black and whites. And lastly, I'm gonna show you how to take some normal photos that you take in anywhere in America, and I'm gonna show you how to make them something really unique that you can use in a lot of different applications. So this six step process is going to work for you regardless of photo program. It's going to be a universal framework to allow you to succeed.